Hi, I'm Chris Long with BMW Trailer Hitches in Humboldt, Kansas. Today we're going to be installing the all new GNRK 1115 turnover ball gooseneck hitch in this 2015 Ford F-150 half ton. Let's get started. In prepping the truck for the installation process, there are a few things that we recommend doing to make your installation go much smoother and more efficiently. As you can tell, I've already lowered the spare wheel and tire out from under the truck, which reveals this heat shield that's between the spare and the, and the tailpipe. We want to take this down. There's only three fasteners holding it into place, and we found that by removing this shield temporarily and placing it back up once we're done with the installation, this will give us a lot more room to work under here when we go up with the center section. So let's take this down. Now it's time to cut our four inch hole in the truck bed. Now you want to pay close attention to your installation instructions to make sure you get the measurement correct so that we get the proper placement. According to the instructions, our measurement is 42 and 5 8 inches from the rear edge of the truck bed. Now remember, if you've got a spray-in bed liner, you'll need to account for the thickness of that spray-in bed liner when you take this measurement. If you have a plastic drop-in bed liner or a heavy-duty rubber bed mat, it's a good idea to get those items completely out of the way so that your measurement is accurate. Now I've already taken the time to line my measurement up, uh, centered between the fender wheels and from the back edge of the truck bed. I'm just going to double check it here at 42 and 5 8 inches. Okay, we're dead on. And I'm going to go ahead and center punch this mark. And now we'll drill an eighth inch pilot hole and once we get our eighth inch pilot hole drilled, we're going to double check that measurement to make sure that we stayed on center. We're still straight on at uh, 42 and 5 eighths inches. Maybe went towards the cab just a little bit. So as I drill my next pilot hole, which will be a quarter inch, I'll try to influence that hole towards the back of the truck just a hair. Remember, as accurate as you can keep this measurement, the better that four inch placement's gonna look in the bed. Then we can double check our measurement one last time. Forty-two and five eighths, perfect. Now it's time to put our four inch hole in the bed. When cutting the four inch hole in the truck bed, you want to make sure to use a good quality hole saw. If you don't already have a four inch hole saw, we have those available to you at BMW. We've got the four inch Starrett model that we use. And we like to use the cordless electric uh, drill. And we'll place that uh, quarter inch bit down into our pilot hole. And I like to run this in reverse for just a few seconds to establish a cutting groove. Once we've got a groove established in the bed, you can switch the drill to the forward position. Be sure it's on the slowest speed possible, and then drill nice and slow, steady. Let the hole saw do the work. Now after the four inch hole is cut in the bed, you'll want to take the time to eliminate your tail filings with a good round file. I've already taken the time to do that. And then we've always recommended treating this raw edge with some kind of a uh, clear touch up paint or even a paint that matches the vehicle's color. It's even more important on the new 2015 Ford F-150s because this is now an aluminum bed. And Ford even has a service bulletin that they've put out talking about the importance of dressing any raw aluminum that might come into contact with steel. There are several products that they have listed on their uh, service bulletin. Today I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum Scratch and Chip Repair. This is probably available at just about any auto parts store. And we're just going to take the applicator and coat that raw aluminum all the way around with a good coat of that acrylic clear touch-up paint. 
Now we're going to place the forward and rearward cross members into position in the truck. Now there's a characteristic that makes determining the forward and rear cross member pretty easy. The forward cross member is going to have four round holes in the center of the rail and the rear cross member will have three slotted holes in the center of the rail. And we've got plenty of room to work under the truck here between these two bed hat channels so it doesn't really make a difference which one you go in with first. The main thing is that you want to make sure that the rails are oriented so that the forward cross member the vertical flange with the holes in it faces the rear of the truck and the rear cross member the, the flange with the holes in it faces the front of the truck. So we're going to put the forward one in first right here. I do seem to have a little bit more room towards the rear of the truck to get that all the way in and then slide that forward to get it out of the way. Now we're going to go in with the rear cross member just like so. You can go ahead and stand those up and just put, put them apart from each other as far as they'll go to give us the room that we need to get the center section into place. Now before we go up with our center section we need to talk about the fact that this is an aluminum bodied pickup truck and anytime we have dissimilar metals such as steel or aluminum that come into contact with each other there's a possibility of what's called galvanic corrosion. Now Ford has issued a service bulletin that deals with this condition. It's called Bulletin Q222 and we'll provide a link in the video so that you can get your hands on a copy to review yourself. It'll go into much deeper detail than what we're accomplishing today. Now in the kit we provided a roll of polypropylene tape which is one of the approved materials in that bulletin to provide a barrier between the center section and the bottom of the bed. Now the fact that there's already paint on the center section and the bottom of the bed, that in and of itself is usually a good enough protection. This is just an extra precaution to make sure that we don't experience that corrosion. Now we're going to place two strips of this tape on each edge of the center section and the, the section here on the back, we want to make sure that we run the first strip right on the, on the edge of the safety chain holes. So we're going to run one solid strip across, putting the leading edge of that tape right in line with the back edge of those safety chain holes. We'll cut that loose. And then we'll place the second strip. There does not need to be any space between these two strips. There's space in the installation instructions. That's just to show that there's two separate strips of tape. We're actually going to let those lap slightly over each other. Right there. We'll cut those and we're going to repeat this on the forward edge. And on this forward edge we want the edge of the tape to be right up against the edge of the center socket. Cut that. And then the two other strips we'll put in will come right up to that edge of the center socket. And we can cut that to length right here around the, around the center socket. Repeat that for the other side. Now the last strip that we're going to put on, we want to go right around the actual edge, the, the protruding edge of the center socket all the way around. That's why this tape is the thickness that it is. It should be right at the same thickness of that protruding center socket. And we'll work the tape all the way around. Like so. Cut that right there. And then that's what our center section should look like, prepped and ready to go underneath the truck. When raising the center section into position under the bed, you'll find that this is probably the only installation step that might require a second person.
Now if you have an overhead lifting device of some kind, now would be a good time to use that. Or we have this device available to you called the Hitch Helper. This has a center strap in the center of it with a cutout for the release pin of the center section. Just lower this down into the hole, center it up, and then we can put our center section into position under the truck, engage the latch pin, and then use the knob to pull the center section up tight against the bottom of the bed. With our center section prepped with the polypropylene tape, our overhead lifting device into place, and our cross members installed, it's now time to go up with the center section. Now, we want to go ahead and have this thing ready to go with the center latch in the open position. So go ahead and have it set and ready to go. This will obviously be oriented towards the driver's side of the truck. We want to lift the center section up into position by coming up over the tail pipe and then line that up with your lifting device and then engage the latch pin double check that it's actually through the notch in your lifting device, in this case it is, and now we can raise the center section up tight against the bed. While you're raising the center section into position under the bed, you want to take care that that center socket stays centered in the hole so that the edge of the bed doesn't try to peel the polypropylene tape off of the, the piece that we put on before. As you can see, we've, we've got it lifted up nice and tight against the underside of the bed here. Go ahead and pull the front cross member firmly against the center section. Repeat that with the rear cross member. Put that into position. And now we're going to put our hardware in. Follow the installation instructions for your setups, but it's a simple half inch bolt with a flat washer under the head through the slotted hole in the rear cross member and a bolt with a, a, bolt with a flat washer under the head for the slots in the center section. And then follow these up with a lock washer and nut. Now as we're finishing up getting our hardware into position, you want to be sure to just leave these hand tight. Do not tighten these down just yet. We have a, a very strict tightening sequence that we need to follow to make sure that everything goes together the proper way. So you'll just want to leave these seven bolts hand tight so that we can make some adjustments if we need, need to. Alright, now we can get our side plates installed. Now we're going to get our hardware into position to install the side plates. And we've given you these spacer blocks with the square hole in it that's going to be for your carriage bolt to engage in. Go ahead and put your carriage bolt into the spacer block and feed this in through the large diameter hole here that's forward of the jounce block. Now go ahead and place that in the frame, but don't turn loose of it. You don't want it to fall down inside there. And you'll notice that we've given you a thick spacer washer and a thin one. The thicker washer is the one that's going to go on the forward hole. Go ahead and slide it on over the bolt. Make sure that it sits inside the hole all the way around. And then we've given you this nice little retention spacer or clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to thread this on to the bolt. And you're going to thread this on there and, and run it all the way up to where that clip is holding your hardware setup into position. This will keep it nice and in place uh, for you firmly while you go up with the side plate. Okay, now we're going to repeat this for the rear hole. Same thing for the rear hole. We're going to take the uh, spacer block in your carriage bolt, install it into the rear hole, hold on to it, put your thinner spacer over the bolt. Make sure that, that spacer fully engages down inside the hole. Take our retainer clip and again thread that onto the bolt and thread it down to where the clip is holding your hardware nice and snug inside the frame for you. Now as we go up with our side plates, there's a real easy way to determine which is the driver's side plate and the passenger side plate. You'll notice that there's a longer portion and a shorter portion to the plate. The longer side faces the front of the vehicle, so we have the driver's side plate here ready to go. And we're going to line up these two mounting holes with the two bolts that we previously installed in the frame. Just get those to line right up over the bolts. And then once you've started over the bolts, Make sure that the ears up here on the side plate are between the two cross members and then just press that up into place. Now we're going to secure this into position 
with lock washers and nuts on the two frame bolts. Do that for both. And now we can secure the side plate to the cross angles. And you're going to take a half inch bolt with flat washers. And you want the flat washers to be on the slotted hole side. So go from the inside out. And then finish these up with lock washers and nuts. And then once you get these in and hand tight, we're going to repeat that exact process on the other side of the vehicle. Then once we get the other side done, we'll go through our, tor our torquing sequence. Now it's time to start our tightening and torquing sequence. And the first fasteners in that sequence will be the ones that hold the cross members to the center section. Now this will be a total of seven bolts, four on the front rail, three on the rear. We're going to go ahead and tighten these down to 80 foot-pounds. Now before we go on with the rest of the tightening process, we need to stop here and make sure that the hitch is square in the truck. You can do this by taking a tape measure or a ruler and measuring from the back edge of this forward bed cross member to the leading edge of the angle iron cross member of the turnover ball. We want this measurement to be the same on both the driver's and the passenger side. You can use a rubber or a plastic mallet to gently tap the hitch to the rear or to the front to make that measurement the same on both sides. Once you have that measurement the same, we can continue with the tightening process. All right, as we continue the tightening and torquing procedure, it's important to note that this particular model of turnover ball is a little bit different in our tightening sequence. Instead of tightening the two bolts that hold the side plate to the frame first, we're going to tighten the two bolts that hold the side plate to the cross members first. Now we need to apply firm pressure on the side plate against the frame of the truck to ensure that it's flat. So I'm going to press that up there tight while I hold the bolt head with a wrench. I'm going to get that good and snug. Do that for the, for the other fastener as well. Okay, now we're going to actually tighten these to 80 foot-pounds. After I torque these to 80 foot-pounds, then we're going to repeat that procedure for the two bolts that attach the side plate to the frame, snug it down, and then torque those to 80 foot-pounds as well. Now it's time for us to install our release handle. Now you can bring this in from the driver's side through the side plate. There's a little curved opening in the side plate provided for the handle. And then bring it through this half circle opening in the center section. And then you want to line this end of the handle up with the square hole in this vertical tab. And you want the handle to be on the forward or cab side of that tab. Take your carriage bolt. Line it right up inside the hole, and then take a lock nut and attach the handle to that tab. And now you'll snug this down good and tight. Now it's time to install our safety chain U-bolts. And we're going to drill half inch holes from underneath the vehicle up through the bed. Now you'll notice that there's several different holes in the center section. The installation instructions will direct your attention to the holes that are closest to the center socket. These are the ones that will fall in the valley of the bed corrugations up top. So we're going to drill these half inch holes from underneath and then we'll drop our safety chain loops in from the top. Alright, we've got our half inch holes drilled through the bed and our half inch U-bolts dropped in from the top side. Now again, since this is an aluminum bed, we need to treat that raw aluminum surface with some kind of an isolator that's approved by Ford. We've used the Rust-Oleum scratch and chip repair just like we used to treat the four inch hole for the center section. Again, that's just to help 
with the possibility of galvanic corrosion that could occur between the steel of the U-bolt and the aluminum of the bed. Now, the safety chain springs, you'll notice that one side is a large side and one side's a small one. The large side faces upward against the bottom of the center section. Hold that into place with your finger and start a half inch lock nut on the U-bolt. And then what we want to do is we want to tighten the lock nut until it's flush with the end of the U-bolt. Check it. And there we go, right there. And we're going to repeat that for the remaining three. After properly installing our safety chain loops, we remounted the spare wheel and tire heat shield and raised the spare tire back into position. Now this particular truck that we worked on today did not have fender wheel liners. If your truck had fender wheel liners and you had to remove those, now would be the time to reinstall those and you may have to put a small notch in the fender wheel liner to clear the release handle. All that's left now is to install the ball. You want to treat the corners, the rounded corners of this ball with a premium white lithium grease. Don't get any on the flat spots, just on the corners. Very light coat will do it. Once the ball is treated, you're ready to put it into the center section. Just drop it into position, engage the latch pin from the driver's side fender wheel and you're ready to tow a trailer. When you want a level bed, retract the pin, pull the ball out, invert it 180 degrees, drop it right back in and re-engage the latch pin. In true BMW fashion, a hitch when you need it, a level bed when you don't.